Welcome to Bite Size Dental Marketing. Today I have Trina Morgan. And Trina, it's such an honor to have you on. You are one of the longest standing clients we've had. Early 2016, we were introduced by Rob Foster. I think he was your supply rep at the time. And it has been such an amazing journey to watch you and Dr. Morgan go from Middle Othian to now the, the new practice in Lubbock. And Andre and I credit you personally with so much of our growth. Uh, you pushed us to be a better agency in those early days. And I'm I so grateful for it. And and I can't thank you enough. And it's just an honor to have you have you come on, on the show. But I would love to hear in your words. Tell me the origin story of Trina Morgan. How'd you get from here to, to from Middle Othian to, to Lubbock to, to where we are today? Oh, well, thanks, Eric. Uh, yeah, I feel like we have a long relationship here. And uh, uh, as well, you have um, enlightened us a lot on marketing and what it takes. And we've learned a lot. And we have a totally different attitude about our role and your role. And uh, I think we both grew a lot together. So um, when we hired you, we were in Midlothian, Texas. Uh, Dr. Morgan, um, my husband, did a lot of large case dentistry, but the goal was to have more of those cases come in. And so we had always done some little marketing, but mostly in-house. And so we, uh, because Rob knew about you guys and recommended you, we didn't know a lot of dental marketing agencies, and that's how we got introduced to you. Mm -hmm. And um, I think early on, I think uh, the frustration was like, to me too, I feel like all of you marketers are trying to send more and more patients and more yeah. patients and you want to brag about the number of patients. And at first, then that frustrated me a lot. Mm -hmm. We didn't want more patients. We had a lot of patients. We wanted the right patients. We wanted to target those specific patients. And so, I, but I think early on as well, um, I was expecting you to do everything for me, to bring all of those things to me, knowing that uh, it took a teamwork and you don't know what's going on in our office every day. You don't know mm -hmm. the patients that are coming and going. You don't know the cases we're starting and stopping. You don't know those. So uh, I found out that we have to provide you with a lot of the content that, that we want to showcase. So I think that together we have learned that target marketing is the thing. It's right. the thing but it, it comes from you uh, watching all those background numbers, my bounce rate, my uh, the number of clicks. You can look at the exact analytics of it. And I can't really see those things, but you can look at them and you can see them. But I have to provide you with the great photography of, of my patients. You can come out and take some, but you're not in my office every day. Right. So that's how we got you. And you did make a difference. We could tell. I think that first year with between both of us was kind of bouncing around and trying to figure mm -hmm. it out and trying to figure each other out. So I do see online that I watch several dental um, groups on Facebook and all and a lot complain about their marketing agencies, but I feel like they're not doing enough. They're not, they're expecting their marketing agency to do more for them like I was expecting from you. And then when you start learning that I have a role, we have a role in it, we have to dedicate some real time to it. So that first year was a little uh, learning curve for all of us, but you absolutely started bringing us the exact kind of patients that we were looking for in Midlothian. Yeah. And we saw the growth of those larger cases and that was exactly what we wanted. So we had a full belief that marketing works. No, I remember there was a point in time that, and again, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but it, it, it felt like there was frustration on both sides because I think we were working hard but you're right. I, I think the content that we were capturing wasn't really bringing in the cases you wanted. And there was a point in time that I will remember of, I think Andre and I just started going down there. Like we just started making a monthly trip down. And I think when we started being in the same room as you and hearing you, and, and I, I think that what you said is really important around the being in the office, we started to see how the office felt and the patients that would come in just sort of organically while we were there. And I think it was through those monthly trips down there that we developed the the relationship we have today, because I think you saw that we really were working hard. We just, we didn't know the content. Now I'm going to argue, we thought the content would do what we wanted it to, but when we started getting that real organic content from you and from the patients and from the team, I think that's what's really moved the needle in the types of patients you wanted. And 
I think it's a testament to you of, of the patience you've shown and, and, and your commitment to how you wanted the office and how Dr. Morgan viewed the office. And, and I think that that's something that kind of on the pre-show we talked about, like, I think you had a vision, what you wanted your office to be. And I never, I don't think you ever wavered from that. And, and I think that is a test that that consistency, I think is just absolutely important when you're going against the grain of everyone trying to take all the insurances in the world and get all the patients they can get. Exactly. That is, that is true for certain. Uh, it's my husband and part of my motivation in helping is he had a vision of what he wanted to do. He loves dentistry. That's the other thing. You need mm -hmm. a dentist. There's so many things in dentistry that a dentist can find that they like to do. And uh, we always want to encourage and mentor the young guys to find something that you really like and latch on to that and then market and get the word out that you do it. Mm -hmm. Because that was my motivation of hiring you guys and all. I knew he's only going to keep practicing and he loves dentistry, but he wants to do certain procedures a certain way on a certain patient. So you have to have that vision of what you want it to be. And you have to go for it with a lot of gusto, which means time, money, it means manpower. And it means sticking to that narrative. And you will get those patients as long as you can perform the dentistry, which would always encourage anyone to, if you have something that you love, get all the continuing education that they can get in it and then know and have the confidence that you can do it and then find you a marketing team that will be on board with you. Get your whole team on board mm -hmm. and keep your vision and uh, you'll get the patience that you want and it'll be successful. I moved to, to here. So that was, um, I had always kind of wanted to come back to Lubbock. We're from this area. And so Lubbock's a nice, calm, slower mm -hmm. pace. And so I had always worked on my husband to try to get out here and uh, during COVID, he said, okay, there was enough that we didn't like about the Metroplex that we thought mm -hmm. Lubbock would be a little better. Our moms both live here. One of our daughters and four grandkids live here. So um, that was, I think COVID was one of the impetus that got us here. But his motivation was if he could, it was hard to take the Midlothian practice, which was very busy with two hygienists and a lot of hygiene. It's hard to do big cases when you're jumping up and Mm -hmm. checking hygiene. He had had an associate a couple of times, but that didn't work out exactly like he wanted it to, although we have a good relationship with our former associates. But he decided that the best way to do the kind of practice he wanted to do was just start from scratch and Lubbock would be a good place to do that. So that's what got us here. So we knew all along we were going to use pain-free that you could help get us where we wanted to go quickly. And so, um, that's how we got here. And then and we started working on the practice, which took much longer to do. Uh, Post-COVID, construction is just crazy. It took much longer. So I like to be uptight. And so that was pretty stressful to me. We had sold a practice, but we were spending a lot of money to uh, do this practice exactly like he wanted to, it mm -hmm. to be. So he wasn't really concerned because he had the, the vision of what he wanted it to be. We are Currently, uh, we started seeing patients very late October, I believe, so mm -hmm. November and December. It was through the holidays, so we really didn't have a lot. It was a good time, though, to get to know our employees, get to do some training, get to um, uh, start some marketing. And so uh, we also started some TV advertising right. here, and uh, you guys helped with that, but we used a local, mm -hmm. local mm -hmm. TV station to do that. We think all of those things are the reason that today – we have big cases going all the time. I will say that, I, again, I, I think it's a testament to how strong of an operator you are that the Facebook Messenger ads, I cannot tell you how many times we've ran them and we tell the offices, look, you've got to respond and don't just give answers, like be interested. And, you know, as, as admins on your Facebook page, we could see, Trina, how you would, would people would message you on Facebook from the ads and it wasn't just you were answering questions. You were getting to know them. You were building a relationship with them. And I think in the world of there's no big things, there's a series of small things. I think that and, and you know, what you outlined in the vision, just responding to those messages and just not saying like, when do you want to come in? But having a conversation with them, building the rapport and then, and then asking them once you had it. I think that that is, again, one of those small, important things that you did through that process. And I think getting your name out on TV and I think keeping the brand consistent of what you wanted it to be. I, th I, 
I, I think you've really, guys have really done an amazing job at the little things that add up to be the success of the practice. But when you look at the past, call it eight months, what do you see as the big milestones or the big events that occurred there? I don't know about big events, but I do agree that it's all of the little things. Mm -hmm. It's making the contacts, it's following through, it's having a relationship. It is, uh, it's dedicating the time. It is not making marketing, which is marketing is just getting the message out. So mm -hmm. a lot of people have a negative connotation of marketing, but basically we just want to get the message out of who we are and what we do and we're here to help you. So it's not a part-time job. It's not something that we try to work in around patients. It's something that we prioritize. And to me, that's one of the, I mean, I am going to give a lot of credit to our success eight months in to that, to mm -hmm. the marketing efforts that you guys have done. But, but like you say, us two, we get a lot of photography going here. Yep. We, we respond to patients. We, we try to, uh, all those Facebook ads. Yeah, I was committed. So I don't know. It, it's, it's hard to always get the patient. It's hard to get the doctor to believe how important that is, but it certainly made a difference. Yeah. And you guys have done amazing at capturing the pictures and the patient testimonials there and, and, and getting that information to us and then us rolling it into the strategy. But the before and afters and the, the little case spotlights and things like that. I, I, I think, you know, you you and your team have done really well at keeping content uh, fresh for us to use. Yes. Thanks. Yes. You we know, listen to Stephanie. We love Stephanie, our rep with you guys. You may do di di different dentistry than we do, but the, your patients want to know who you are. They want to see mm -hmm. that you're fun, that you're real people. So, and, but it doesn't need to be all fun content. It needs to be, uh, dentistry and dentistry that you're doing and happy patients. So, and all of those things we know wrap up into your Google search spot. And, you know, it's just so many things mm -hmm. that when I feel like people want to do it on their own, it's just hard. I cannot do what you can do for me, mm -hmm. but you cannot do for me what we need done in the office. So it's definitely a team approach and it's definitely not uh, marketing isn't, I don't know, tooting our own horn so much as we want you to know we're here and we know want you to know we're willing to help and we want you to know we're good at it and we have great people. And so we consistently want to put that fresh message out there. Yeah, it. it I find that the people who don't like marketing put it in two camps. They put it in advertising. So, you know, a $39 new patient special, which I would never want to do. It's not going to happen here. Not going to happen. <laughs> right. Shouldn't happen. On the other one, they think it's just self-promotion. But if you really think about it, it's just, I, I love the way you said it. I, I, I think marketing is just communicating who you are and what you represent. And that will resonate with people. And, and, and as they come into points of need, they will reach out to you. And everybody's gonna need dentistry at some point. It, it's just a matter of where along their journey. And you really can't manufacture it with a, 39 or $69 new patient special or anything like that. The larger cases that Davis just likes to do a lot of surgery, a lot of implants and all. I mean, of course, a lot of them are high dollar procedures, but that really isn't. He likes those. It makes a difference in people's lives. People mm -hmm. cry often. And when you start um, letting people know that you do that sort of thing, there's a lot of people that need that kind of dentistry. So a lot of people think you're not going to have any patients, but the truth is there's a lot of people that need complex care and they don't even know where to go to. And a lot of other dentists, they don't want to do that kind of dentistry because every dentist has what they like. Some like endo, some like pedo, mm -hmm. but the ones that lack complex care should pursue that because there are a lot of people that are looking for a solution to their problems. And so that's, we now want, people to know that we're here and we do that and we can do a great job of it. And we want to help you have the result that you get. And it's incredibly rewarding. Our employees all love it. We have celebration appointments when these patients are finished with treatment and it's fun. It's fun. It makes a difference. It makes, makes it makes all of us cry some days listening mm -hmm. to people's stories. Anyway, it's, 
those are the game changers and that's why we do it. But um, marketing now, gets it out there. When you look back on your career, is there a memorable patient that pops into your head? Oh, there are several memorable patients that there's one that was just in that had had um, a reactive arthritis and they couldn't even really figure out what her problem was. The arthritis was debilitating. She was even actually in a wheelchair for a mm. little short time, but she had fought with gum disease for years. And so she had dentition that was terminal. It was failing. And when she finally decided to give up on them, then she came to Davis from this area. She came to Davis in Dallas. And uh, and today she's had her uh, fixed implant over dentures, which are beautiful, but she has been uh, drug free. She has, has no arthritis symptoms after having her teeth removed because uh, because of that inflammation, the inflammation response is affecting every part of her body. So patients like that, when it totally changes their whole life where they can now do things that they couldn't do before, they're memorable and, and they're what we like to do. That's a great story. I mean, what a life-changing event to, to, to go through that and get to be part of that. I mean, she'll, you know, remember forever that you guys are part of her story. They, and that's... they thank you forever. They, you know, mm -hmm. thank you. Like we did something special when someone else could have done that for her, but we're the lucky ones that got chosen to do it and yeah. make such a difference. And yeah, they give us all the credit, but we don't really deserve all the credit, but it's rewarding. That's so great, Trina. That's so great. Well, Trina, thank you very much for your time. It's always a pleasure. I'd love to have you on anytime. And uh, th that was your bite of dental marketing. Okay. It was a pleasure, Eric. And uh, thanks to you guys for all you do for us. We could not do it without you.